Just to say that the university that I represent is also a very young university. We celebrate our 20th year. So if you haven't heard of the university, the Free University of Bozen or Bolzano, uh, it's uh, uh, understandable. Uh, and we are distinguished by the fact that uh, we have inherited a great deal of cultural conflict in our area, uh, inasmuch as the majority of the population in that province of Italy are of uh, the German language community. Uh, the main city, however, Bolzano, is uh, characterized by a majority of Italian-speaking uh, inhabitants and citizens. And uh, as some of you know, the history of that province has been uh, a history of considerable conflict. Also, the foundation of the university was associated with a great deal of uh, controversy, but now we have the university. And our university is trying to pursue some of the ideals that I'm very happy to find being discussed at this conference, which is the university not just as a elitist ivory tower that could be placed just anywhere where it's convenient and where there is enough money, but a university that is a sort of a catalyst in a society, a, society, a university that has a social commitment and a uh, role to play, not just uh, to its uh, students and uh, the academic community, but to the wider community as well. So with all the optimism, but also with all the uh, caution that is being mentioned today, I just want to give a brief overview of what I see uh, is the current position of universities generally, and we've already had a taster of that. The history of the universities, and we are celebrating the oldest uh, Western universities in this country, is on the one hand a history of considerable success, and we have been uh, making enormous progress in spreading the ideals that constituted the university, uh, not just in more and more locations, but also uh, in uh, collaboration with other countries. But the university in recent decades, particularly in the period after the Second World War, emerged from a role in society that was oriented towards serving the privileged few to becoming an institution of mass education. Access to the university was together, one could say, with the creation of a welfare state, one of the uh, central elements of consolidating solidarity in what would have otherwise been a very class-divided society. Uh, and so we uh, saw that participation in uh, higher education has been increasing in uh, recent decades, uh, and that has been obviously a very positive development, uh, giving opportunities to people who uh, in their families and uh, in their social environment would have never had access to higher education. That meant a democratization of the university, that meant uh, a obviously confrontation with bigger numbers and with a completely different uh, student and uh, also to some extent uh, staff population. But I think we find ourselves at the crossroads uh, in as much as the observations that we already heard, the universities are being drawn into quite an opposite uh, stream of developments that has to do with competition, that has to do with achievement orientation, that reflects itself in the ranking tables which have become an obsession in so many universities. And I speak of uh, a university that in its short uh, years has made it uh, amongst the 10 best small universities in the Times Higher Education uh, ranking. Uh, 
but as I say, I would not like to be uh, obsessed by these kind of ranking results. If you look at that statistically, uh, the share of the population that has benefited from uh, higher education over the recent decades uh, in most countries has been a tremendous success story. Uh, the fact that the United States find themselves at the top there obviously has something to do with their particular classification of uh, tertiary education. Um, but uh, if we look at a country that I also know uh, intricately, Ireland, uh, it is certainly a, hist a part of the history there as well, that investing in education, making use of educational opportunities is something that is culturally rooted and is something that the population as a whole appreciates and has been increasingly uh, participating. We see that countries... Uh, like uh, Thailand and Mexico uh, have made tremendous progress in recent decades. But we can also say, see that a country like Italy uh, is uh, still relegated to uh, the bottom of that kind of a table, uh, not far from the participation rate in a country like India, to say nothing then of some uh, African countries. If you look at that, in terms of the enrollment overall, there have been variations in uh, recent decades as well uh, that the uh, uh, transition from secondary to tertiary education is not a, a linear development in all countries and is obviously subject to also economic conditions and the uh, uh, framing conditions that prevail in a country. And so whilst this uh, appears to be a success story uh, and that we can project into the future as well, that by looking ahead in these kind of predictions over the next decades, uh, we see that the trend towards participation in tertiary education uh, will in all likelihood continue, but that the, the differences between the countries remain rather stable. Uh, and I think that indicates that university education is a highly ambiguous instrument. It is, on the one hand, an instrument for providing opportunities, for promoting ideas of uh, integration, of progress, uh, also of liberalization. But at the same time, it can also be an instrument of the reproduction of inequalities. And if we look at that uh, under a couple of broad categories, we can say that, and I'll show a statistics on that, that the redistributive effect, the social mobility between generations, is still very low in most countries. That those who have parents who went to university have predominantly access to university and for those classes that uh, the opening of universities was actually meant to be for uh, is not happening to the extent uh, that it should have happened. Therefore, university participation largely correlates with economic status. Uh, people, even in countries where uh, university fees are relatively low, uh, are being uh, not uh, encouraged enough or uh, are actually being deterred from risking a university education. We had the topic this morning already mentioned as well uh, that the access of women to universities has been increasing dramatically in terms of the participation in courses, but is by no means reflected in terms of access to academic positions by women. So again, a huge gender gap is being reproduced, particularly at the university level. Uh, we can find the same in terms of uh, minorities, ethnic minorities, and their representation in university education. And I'm asking myself what with increased migration that that will mean for the composition of the student population in the future, uh, even though, again, a lot of uh, uh, immigrant 
uh, uh, motivation uh, is associated with gaining access to higher education and particularly to a liberal higher education. Uh, the geographic inequality is being reproduced globally as we have uh, seen from those statistics and there is no global redistribution happening. A uh, recent interesting statistics that was summarized in the newspaper The Guardian uh, brings that about uh, very clearly, that the richest 20% of the population occupy almost 80% of university places, uh, uh, that the distribution uh, of participation is indeed very unequal. And if we look at these kind of statistics where the, uh, the uh, blue left column indicates uh, how many uh, of the university students uh, come from a background where the parents have not participated in education. It's a credit to the country that is represented on this panel uh, that South Korea has the highest proportion of uh, uh, students who have, as it were, uh, used the opportunity uh, for social mobility through university education. But again, it's very regretful that Italy uh, features uh, in the lower ranks uh, together with countries like uh, Austria, Germany, even lower, uh, so that the uh, economic status alone uh, does not indicate that there is a great deal of uh, redistribution re uh, happening. So the dilemmas for, for the future, which are the subject, I think, of a great part of this conference, is do we uh, as a university uh, follow the trend for greater elitism and what that means and how it's being spelled out is that again as I mentioned in terms of ranking quality measures are dominating our uh, quality uh, uh, disputes and, and that is quite ironic. Uh, it's all measured in uh, statistics and in numbers and where is the actual measure for quality in those kind of rankings. Uh, it uh, is a question whether we want to promote uh, meritocracy, whether there are more and more elite universities and then other universities that just sort of uh, swipe up uh, the rest. Uh, that there is uh, uh, an emphasis on students passing their degrees as quickly as possible, leaving aside again all the kind of uh, issues of personality formation that I think uh, is not again to be pressed into the three-year and uh, two-year uh, bachelor and, and uh, master cycle necessarily, higher and higher specialization uh, in the various subject areas, universities making a name for having very specific, very narrow uh, research agendas, a national introspection despite the possibilities for mobility, but if you just look at how, for instance, a student exchange program like Erasmus is actually discriminating against older students with family commitments. They cannot participate. Uh, students have to subsidize their uh, stays abroad to a large extent. So again, inequality is being reproduced there. And subject-oriented, uh, very narrow clustering of subject areas and degree courses is a feature of those kind of trends that we are all being subjected to. What I would like to propose, and again, that has been mentioned in uh, previous presentations, the university should be an instrument of redistribution, and that is part of our history, and we can make it in terms of making universities more inclusive, that in universities are also instruments of lifelong learning and not just uh, after secondary school entry, providing opportunities rather than eliminating opportunities, International mobility needs to be a feature that it always was of universities, but with all the bureaucratic barriers to recognition of uh, modules and credits acquired abroad, uh, we are going in the opposite direction, and that needs to be redressed. A person-oriented learning, I don't need to say more in this context, uh, that has been mentioned uh, many times, and not a subject-oriented uh, form of learning, uh, 
and the complexity of issues that we are confronting requires what the university can provide, an interdisciplinary approach rather than a higher specialization on subject areas.